So just like we did when we were operationalizing our evaluative criteria for policy analysis, we have to establish conditions uh, and set targets for program evaluation, right? This, this lets us know uh, what is good and what is bad, right? What are we looking for and what do different findings mean? Doing this at the outset uh, really helps us make sure that our analysis is disciplined and rigorous. And when we do this, we really are going to have to justify the conditions that we come up with. And it would be really helpful to look to the literature um, or, or common practices uh, or to, you know, these targets don't exist for you. It may be valuable to try to come up with logical targets and describe your reasoning for coming up with those targets. So we need to be disciplined about deciding what is good and what is bad before we get to the point of analysis. So we're going to have to set some targets and we're going to have to justify those targets. So going back to our school lunch distribution program example, uh, you know, I've asked how many children are being fed or receiving lunches through the program. I have to set some targets, right? And so um, we know that uh, 2,800 children in our made-up school district receive free and reduced uh, price lunches uh, during the school year. Um, this is a number that we could use to estimate the need uh, for such a program. We could also look to self-reported surveys, and, and we know that last year uh, we surveyed our students and 1,900 of them reported hunger over the summer in our district. We could also use this number. Um, and if we want to be uh, really rigorous and creative, um, we could use both. Um, so, right, we could set that 1900 as a minimum and 2800 as a maximum, right, to establish a range. Um, and so I'm going to define my conditions like this. A positive condition um, is one in which we're likely to meet the need uh, of students uh, who, who are hungry over the summer. And so if our program serves between 1,900 and 2,800 children, uh, we can pretty safely say we're in that range and we are, are very highly likely to meet the need of, of students. Um, a neutral condition, right, we might say meets anywhere between 50 and 75% of need. A negative in our situation would suggest that uh, we meet less than 50% of need with this program. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I'm using the maximum and saying fewer than half of those children are being fed through our program over the summer. Um, so I've, I've defined my conditions at the outset so that when I do finally get that number, uh, I know exactly what it means. Now, this might take you some research and it might take you a few tries. Um, one of the things that you'll probably have to do is look at the data sets that exist already. Uh, to see what kinds of uh, data points are going to be available to you and what kind of ranges are normally used in these kinds of studies. So because you're going to have to go back and forth a little bit to identify relevant data points um, and establish uh, relevant targets, um, the chances are you're going to see a resulting number uh, before you identify your targets, right? And, and uh, what we want to do to maintain that discipline is to try to keep those two numbers separate in our minds uh, until we are ready to actually apply the number and do the evaluation. And the reason I, I kind of stress this is because it's, it's very easy to go into an assessment or an evaluation with a kind of predetermined notion of what you're going to find use numbers that are automatically going to mean we, we found positive or we found negative here. And so we want to try to maintain that discipline to ensure that our findings are fair and reliable.